Hey guys, Rusty, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Cool, hey? Hey guys, Rusty over here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to solo Heroic Agrimar and also Heroic Argus the Unmaker. Now, the reason why you're going to want to solo these guys is, well, for transmog purposes. I mean, why else would you do it? Now, again, this is on Heroic difficulty. If you manage to do on Heroic, you could also easily do this on Normal. And now, these guys drop two very special transmog weapons. Agrimar drops Tashalak, the two-handed weapon that the boss uses, and Argus drops uh, the Scythe of the Unmaker, which is the two-handed polearm that the boss uses, which you can see the models when you do the bosses. Now, the only hard boss here really is Agamar because of one mechanic, and this is a very slight gear check, so you do want to be pretty decently geared. I did this around 468 item level, but you could probably do it around maybe 455, 460, depending on corruption gear and Azerite. So let's start off with Agamar. Again, you kill Agamar, you could very easily kill Argus the Unmaker. Now, the reason, or the, the mechanic that makes this boss hard is going to be the Tashalak Technique. Now, I could very easily push the boss to 80% health here and skip the first Tashalak Technique, but just to show you guys two ways to handle it, I wanted to basically get the first Tashalak Technique out there. Now, again, there's two ways to handle this. There's the hard way and the easy way. The hard way is actually seeing and doing the Tashalak Technique properly. The second way, the easy way, is just DPS the boss and push him to 80%, 40% and dead before he even does a Tashalak Technique. Now, this is the first start. First, he's gonna do a Foe Breaker there and then a Flame Rend. And when he finishes this, you're gonna get knocked back and you need a way to survive that knockback. Now, he's gonna do a second Foe Breaker, which does about 500% increased damage from the last one. It'll almost one-shot you. So you need to make sure you have a defensive up for that. And again, you need something to survive that knockback, like Demon Hunter Glide, Warrior Charge, Heroic Leap, stuff like that to be able to survive that knockback. Now, once you push the boss to 80% health, he will go into this first intermission. You need to kill both of those flames of Tashalak, the two big ads, and you're also gonna have these embers of Tashalak. Now, if these embers reach the boss, they're gonna explode and put a stacking dot on you, which you see is a little fire emblem on uh, the right side of my screen there. Now, you can stagger this. If you kill one of the embers of Tashalak, they'll just go into that pool there, right? You see behind the boss, and then they will eventually respawn and start walking towards the boss again. Now, you can just let them all hit the boss if you're geared enough, as it won't do that much damage. However, if you're taking too much damage from the dot, simply just kill the embers of Tashalak until your dot falls off. Now, the second way to handle the Tashalak technique is to DPS the boss to his intermission phases before he even has a chance to cast uh, the Tashalak technique. So again, he phases at 80% health, 40% health, and then 0% when he dies. So what you're going to want to do, the easiest way to do this, guys, for all classes, again, don't use any DPS cooldowns on pull. Try and save them for the intermission phases. By the way, you can see the dot hitting kind of hard there. It's getting a little risky. Um, save, save them all for the second phase. Push the boss to 80%. It's very easily, very easy to do that before he does the first taste like technique. Once he's out of that first intermission, pop all your DPS cooldowns, except Bloodlust, and push him to 40% health. Now, what I tried to do here was I tried to wait and see if I could get my cooldowns back up without killing the second flame, but the boss will eventually just phase, so you might as well just kill off the flames of Tashalak. Now, again, once he gets to 40%, you need to kill him before he does that Tashalak technique, so I just go ahead and pop drums and whatever DPS cooldowns I have remaining, which is pretty much just, I mean, if you want to consider that a DPS cooldown, and then I just nuke the boss. Again, there's two ways to handle Tashalak technique, guys. Again, you get to, you can either handle it properly, you need a way to survive the knockback and the second floor breaker, or DPS the boss down to 80%, 40%, and then dead before he have, even has a chance to do those Tashalak techniques. Now, again, that for, the first way to do it, which is to handle it properly, all classes are not going to be able to do this. Like, for example, priests, I don't think have, I could be wrong, I don't think priests have a way to survive the knockback. You can't outrange the knockback either. You will just go flying off the platform and you'll die. Also, that second foe breaker, the one that does 500% increased damage, will do a lot of damage to you and might just end up one-shotting you. So if you have the gear to survive that second foe breaker, chances are you'll have the gear anyways to, again, DPS to boss sound. Again, it's 80%, then 40%, and then dead before he even has a chance to do the Tashalak technique. And also, if he starts casting it, he pushes the boss to those uh, intermission phases, he will sometimes interrupt the cast and you might be able to survive it anyways. So again, save all your DPS cooldowns on pull, use them when get them to 40% after the first intermission, and after the second intermission, I recommend using drums or bloodlust if you have that ability and kill the boss. And don't forget the embers of Tashalag dot, you can stagger that out and kite the boss away from them and kill them until the dot falls off and then you can let the rest hit so it doesn't refresh. Simple enough. Now let's move on to Argus the Unmaker. And again, guys, if you were able to kill Heroic Agamar, you could very very easily kill Argus like this guy complete joke fun fight but complete friggin joke compared to Agamar in terms of soloing now he's gonna do one major ability in phase one 
I guess, kind of. Is, that's going to be a sweeping sight. Now, this is a technically a DPS check, although it's very, very easy to make. You need to push on the 70% health before the sweeping sight kills you, although that chances are that won't happen until, like, at least, at the very least, 10 or more sacks, or realistically, probably, like, 20, to be honest with you. Now, he's also going to do Cone of Death, which is going to do a Cone of Death in front of him. Don't stand in it. A lot of guilds, a lot of my guildmates during Mythic Progression, they stood in the Cone of Death. Don't do that. Now, he's also going to spawn this Soul Blight Orb, which is going to debuff you with a debuff. Basically, it's just going to put a dot in you when it expires. It's also going to leave that black crap on the ground. Don't stand in it. Now, believe it or not, that actually, if you do stand in that, it actually is kind of a hard-hitting dot, so it's very simple. Don't stand it. Now, I could have easily pushed the boss here to 70% health, but I was waiting to see if he would do his buff orbs. Now, if you have two or more people, um, he will put buff orbs on you. You have your lightning orb, and you have the ball of baby blow that he sometimes puts on the ground. But since you're soloing this, and you don't have the second person to put the second orb on, he won't do the buff orbs. So basically, guys, his first phase, all you need to know, push the boss to 70% health. Simple enough. Now, once he gets to 70%, you're going to have all this, this lightning crap going around. You're going to big circle. Don't, don't stand in that. It's a bad time right there, okay? Don't stand in the lightning crap. And then he's going to be pushed into phase two, which ends at 40% health. This is pretty much the same thing as phase one. It's actually a lot easier than phase one because of this avatar of Agamar buff you get. Technically, it's a debuff, but it's a buff. Essentially, this is going to increase your health by 100%. It's going to double your health, so there's, there's really no way you could die here. So all you're going to do is simply push the boss to 40% health. He's also gonna put the soul bomb on you. Uh, it's gonna do a damage. Ignore it. He's also gonna put those sides that go in a straight line. You can stand in it. It won't kill you because of the avatar of Agamar debuff. But you guess you could avoid it too. I mean, good practice. Why not? Anyways, once he gets to 40% health, Agamar's gonna hit him with his time bomb there. And the first intermission, or the only intermission, is going to happen. Where all these constellation designate, constellar designate, I don't know. The big ads are gonna spawn. Now, all you're gonna do, kill the ads. That's it. Now, there is one thing to note that the your two of them will become melee ads if you are maybe a little bit undergeared. If you, I mean, if you manage to kill Agmar undergeared, they might do a little bit of melee damage to you, which is basically heavier damage. So you might want to focus them down first. Also, they will, the ads will be debuffed. They will take increased damage from certain abilities. So, for example, one might take increased damage from Frost. That's really not too important. If you want, you can kill the ones that take increased damage from your spells, but it's really not a big deal since you have to kill them all anyways. They're also going to do a Cosmic Bacon cast. Ignore it. They're also going to do a Cosmic Ray cast. Ignore it. There's nothing you could do about those. Just kill the ads in this intermission and you'll be perfectly fine. They do not have a lot of health. And again, some of them will be taking increased damage from your abilities. So they'll die pretty quickly. And once you kill all of them, the transition for the final phase will start. And my god, this is the best transition out of any boss fight ever. Like, I thought Gul'dan was good. This one is friggin' awesome. Look at it. He just spawns all these sides. They go in you and then he just whacks your ass. I think it could have been better if he didn't stop there. Like, he's just gone straight in and then hit. I don't like that he stopped there, but it's whatever. It's a small detail. Now, he's gonna kill you. Don't worry, you're not dead. Ignore all the jokes about your raid saying, Don't worry, guys, we almost got him. We'll get him next time. Ignore all those jokes. You just gotta wait. Now, by the way, notice where the bush out of A&R comes out of. You see that? It comes out of her bush. Ever, ever notice that, right? Anyways, she's gonna spawn a tree, and eventually you're gonna be able to release your spirit here. Go ahead and release spirit. It's gonna put you to death realm with all those shyads. Run to the tree and you'll respawn. If you hit a shyad, it'll basically explode and be slowed for a little bit. Don't hit the shyads. Just walk, in, walk into the tree. When you come out, make sure you interrupt the end of all things cast. If he gets that cast off, you just insta die. That's pretty much the only way you could die in this phase and this fight, to be honest. Now, the scythe debuff, the deadly scythe, is going to be a permanent debuff now. So, again, this is technically a DPS check, although it's an easy one. You also do tortured rage and also do not stand in the Cerulees. Now, these re origination module adds, I chose to kill them now the way these work if they finish their cast or if you kill when you kill them that black pool they're spawning it gets bigger the longer they're up if you stand in that you'll take damage now I'm not sure how much damage you take if you stand in them, but chances are it's probably not that much. So you might honestly be able to ignore them completely and just nuke the boss down. He'll also do Soul Bomb, which again will just do some damage after a certain amount of time. Guys, this phase, don't stand in the Cerulees. Kill the eyes if you want and just nuke the boss down. It's a complete joke. And that's pretty much it, guys. Again, the only real difficulty here is Heroic Agamar. I just want to go over one more time how you handle the Tatialak technique. The best way to handle this technique is to push the boss first to 80% health to skip the first Tatialak technique. And after the first intermission, you're going to want to push him to 40% health to skip the second Tatialak technique. And then finally, you want to kill him before he does the third Tatialak technique. Now, if for some reason he gets it off, you need a way to survive that Flame Run knockback and also that second Bowbreaker cast. That is a very deadly ability. 
it will almost one shot you i promise you make sure you have some kind of defensive cooldown or something and again for the intermissions to get out of them you need to kill both of these flames of tashalak and also the way the embers of tashalak work when they reach the boss they will explode put a big dot on you you can stagger them out by killing them and cutting the boss away until the debuff falls off but the only way to get rid of them is for them to hit the boss although it's really not that big of a deal again guys though the best way for you to handle this and the uh, tashalak technique push the boss to his intermissions before he even has a chance to cast it. That's a way every single class could do it. Again, I did this around 460 item level with decent corruption. You can do this with less though. Anyways, guys, thank you very much for watching. Until next time, bye-bye. Oh, and Halo 3 is the best Halo. Almost forgot that one. Bye-bye.